Okay. Uh, my name is Emily Titan, and I'm a Rhode Island resident and disability rights activist. I'm autistic and a member of the Autistic Self-Advocacy Network and a member of Not Dead Yet, and um, thank you for hearing us this evening. Um, the National Disability Rights, as you know, Not Dead Yet, the National Disability Rights Group that has long opposed, is this, opposed euthanasia and assisted suicide. The opposition is based in universal principles of social justice that apply to everyone, whether disabled or not. Oh, I'm sorry, whether right. disabled or not. The second this bill passes, depressed people will be put in harm's way. For example, Oregonian Michael Freeland easily obtained a lethal prescription for his terminal diagnosis, despite a 43-year history of severe depression, suicide attempts, and paranoia. Fortunately, other doctors and counselors intervened to address his real needs and he died a natural death about two years later. When this story came to light, the prescribing doctor said he didn't think a psychological consult was necessary. Or again, statistics for the last five years show that barely 2% of patients were referred to but for a psychological evaluation. Doctors are simply not capable of identifying such psychological problems. This bill also endangers older Rhode Island residents. Every year in Rhode Island, it is estimated that over 200,000 people over age 60, more than 20,000 reported and unreported cases of abuse. Only in the fantasy world of the proponents are all families, including the thousands of abusive and dysfunctional ones, happily gathered around the peaceful and willing suicide. The kind of suffering this bill talks about is social and psychological. Doctors report people choosing suicide because of loss of dignity, loss of autonomy, feeling like a burden, and loss of control of bodily functions. These reasons suggest a meaning of dignity that is fragile and easily lost through disability and dependence on others. The people acting on these views, proponents admit, tend to be wealthier, better educated, and people with a strong preference for control. This is presented as a good thing. Assisted suicide proponents are also overwhelmingly white. 97% of Oregon suicides have been white, in a state 22% non-white. The Pew Research Center found in 2013 that nationally, black and Latino voters oppose assisted suicide by a two to one margin. Whatever else assisted suicide is, it is not about pain. Pain is a medical problem that palliative care can solve. As renowned palliative care expert Dr. Ira Blalock testified, if I thought that lethal prescriptions were necessary to alleviate suffering, I would support them. We need to wrap it up, I'm afraid. Okay. Um, I'll try and get through this quickly. In 34 years of practice, I have never abandoned a patient to die in uncontrolled pain and never need to hasten a patient's death. Alleviating suffering is different from eliminating the sufferer. Allowing a person to die gently is importantly different from actively ending the person's life. Reject this bill.